Hey yo, tabletop sports fans, this is Bob Hansen coming to you with an update on projects that I'm working on for History Maker Baseball. So first of all, let's talk about the History Maker Baseball 2020 projection thing that I was doing that I made a video on, and it was a great video. Talked a lot about the seven inning baseball concept that I had been working on. Um, to be honest, I am not really happy with um, not really happy with the 2020 season and to be honest the reason I'm not happy with it is I'm just not really into the way that modern baseball is played and it just comes down to there's not a lot of base running there's more it's more focused on home runs and strikeouts and it's very evident when you play the 2020 set the how many strikeouts there are how many uh, home runs, there are a lot of solo home runs. I had games where it was just solo home runs the entire game. And then there were games, and then a lot of strikeouts. And so it just wasn't as fun. I mean, it was good. It was a good uh, system, and it worked okay with the seven-inning baseball concept. And it, the seven-inning baseball concept really works well. So I decided to move this into a different direction. And this different direction is something I had been working on before. It was a league that I had already drafted for another game system completely uh, and I decided to convert it into History Maker Baseball. So that said, let's keep moving forward here. So uh, when, we, when we look at this here, um, this is uh, kind of a refresher first of all of what 7 inning baseball is when we talk about 7 inning baseball. Again, that's a 7 inning baseball game. It is where ties are possible because we only play two extra innings. We only play nine innings maximum for the game if it's still tied after nine innings, unless it's a playoff game, of course. Uh, and in this case, there's only going to be a World Series at the end of this. But uh, if there's a tie, then that's it. And that's, that's the way it's going to get recorded into the stats, and I've accounted for it in my standings and stuff like that, so it's okay. Eight-man uh, batting lineup. Pitchers do not hit, and there are no, no designated hitters. It's just eight batters, okay? 18-player uh, roster for each team. That includes eight standard fielding positions, four backups. There's one infielder, one outfielder, a catcher, and a utility. And it's all important to note that the backups also get downgraded one level in their fielding. So if they were neutral, they become semi-iron. If they were semi-gold, they become neutral. Um, if they're semi-iron already, then they become full uh, iron. If they're a utility player, they get downgraded two levels. So a, nor a neutral player would go down all the way down to a full icon. That allows me to have the more flexibility to play an infielder at any position. Basically saying, yeah, they can play at third base, they can play at second base, they can play at first base, they can play at shortstop. If they can't play catcher, there is a backup catcher we have. Okay. A utility player can play any position on the field, but he's not going to play it as well. So that's kind of the gamey way of taking care of that. Okay, Four starting pitchers, two relievers. Relievers are limited to eight innings per three-game series. Uh, I'm sorry, each reliever is only limited to four. Sorry, they get four, so eight total between the relievers. One of those starting pitchers is a semi-star reliever. And that pitcher, or, I'm sorry, one of the starting pitchers is a semi-star starting pitcher. Uh, they can either start a game because sometimes there may be some replacement. They may stay as a replacement, but they can also act as a relief pitcher as well. Uh, each game, we're going to roll a decider die to see if one of the starters is out for the game, and we're going to place one of the backups. Uh, I also roll a second decider die if that first one comes up true, and if that one also comes up true, then it's the catcher that gets replaced. Otherwise, I do a roll on a table. And pitcher is the seven on there, so the pitcher is going to be the next spot that is out most often next to catcher okay but this kind of replicates the fact that catchers typically don't play a full season although back in the 50s they actually did um you look at you know players like yogi Berra or Roy campanella they they played almost all of the games of the season so um but this is just to kind of replicate that a little bit and it's it it works i think uh, it's been working so far so all right moving on so we're going to be using the, uh, what I used for the draft was the 1954 players, essentially. So what I did was I went out to Baseball Reference, actually, to do this. Um, 
and I looked at all of the starters for every single team in Major League Baseball for 1954. So the ones that are in those first eight positions in baseball, refer baseball reference, right? The catcher, first base, second base, and all that, right? I also took the top four starting pitchers for each team in the list and the top two relievers for each team, for every team in the league. I also then took the top backup catcher, infielder, outfielder, and utility player for each team. So if there was a third baseman that was listed in there, that player automatically became an infielder. Unless it was the second infielder I came upon, that player usually became the utility player. Um, but And same thing for outfielder and catcher. And they did that for every team in the league. That way, there were just enough players basically to draft for every team to have what they needed. Uh, and nothing less, nothing more. Okay? Uh, the way I did this was it was a weighted draft, meaning that some teams were drafted, dra they got to draft multiple rounds before other teams were able to draft. What that means is that uh, the top two, or no, actually it was, I think it was the top four teams were able to draft one round, then the top eight, then the top uh, 12, and then everybody. So by the time that the last four teams got to draft, the top four teams already had... Um, you know, four players already in their rosters, okay? So it was weighted, and then also was based on some salary caps that were in there. Uh, this was originally done for his uh, for time travel baseball, uh, which they really originally did it for, and they have a dollar sign system for buying some players. It's based on war, essentially, and so there were some salary limitations, so the higher teams that drafted higher up, uh, they did have a little bit higher salary cap, so that kind of also affected the quality of some of the teams. What I wanted to replicate here is the fact that there are going to be some pretty good teams in here, but there's also going to be some pretty bad teams. But I'm playing a 42-game schedule for this season. I'm expecting that the top team in the league is probably going to win maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30 games in that area-ish. Okay, Maybe a little bit more, maybe up to 32 or something like that, but I don't... Nobody's going to run away with it, I don't think, at the end of the season, okay? Um, but anyways, um, and then uh, each drafted player was given a contract of one to six seasons. So this is actually going to be something that I plan on doing 1955 uh, after this season is over. So I'm going to take this, keep the players where they are, the players that did, do stick around, they're going to be on the teams for 1955 if they're still under contract. If they're not, then I have some rules that I'll be working on for if players stay inside a new contract with the same team or if they become free agents or whatever. And, and so um, I will be doing a further video on that when it comes closer to that time about talking about that. I've actually already kind of started that process a little bit. Um, I started looking at rating some of the players from 1955 already and starting to see where the holes are in the various teams and what... Uh, holes are going to need to fill, and it's pretty drastic, actually. A lot more drastic than I thought it would be. So the teams could change quite a bit uh, you know, from season to season, which is actually a really cool thing if you think about it. Okay? Um, so, anyways. Oh, and the I used the 1954 History Maker Baseball cards from Play Games for this. So I just kind of went through and then carded everybody and made custom cards for each team with the team logos and stuff like that for the teams that I have in this league. Okay. Um, but I did use the, I didn't rate this season on my own. Uh, I did, I, I basically used the one that was already existing, but for 1955, I will be rating every player on my own. So, all right, moving forward. Um, so let's talk about this league that we're going to be running here. It's called the American Baseball Association. Okay, so this is essentially um, what we're going to be running. Uh, it's going to be really close to what Major League Baseball was in 1954. There's going to be 16 teams. There's going to be two eight-team leagues. We're going to have, instead of the American League and the National League, we're going to have the junior and senior circuits. Okay. Um, cities are roughly in the same cities as Major League Baseball in 1954, as you'll see when we go through the teams and what teams are out there. Um, there are some things that are close, like, for example, uh, the, with the team that would be representing roughly the New York Giants is actually in this league, the Queens Royals. They play in Queens, okay? Um, there's a team in 
Washington, um, which instead of being called Washington, it's called Columbia. Um, another team that plays in New York City, um, which is roughly the New York Yankees, but they don't actually play in Bronx. Um, but they are called the Gotham Grays because they are in Gotham, which is a nickname for New York City. So like I said, roughly the same cities, same city name somewhat. Uh, but you'll see how this looks in a minute here. Also, a uh, fun thing to note, 1955, I will be moving the Philadelphia Spartans, which are in the junior circuit right now, to Kansas City next year. Uh, the jury is still out if I'll keep the name for these. I already know that if this league goes all the way to 1958, when Los Angeles moves to, our, when Los Angeles gets the Brooklyn Robins, <laughs> uh, they will not be known as the Robins in New York. Um, they will be known as the... Um, they will be known as the Stars. And I also know that when San Francisco receives the Queens Royals, uh, they will be known as the Seals. So, um, but anyways, that's kind of a little little thing up the, in the future. That's a long way off. But let's take a look and see what the teams are going to be. Remember, these are all drafted teams, so there's probably not going to be too many original players on any of these teams because, they're, again, they're drafted teams. So let's take a look and see what we got. So here's a look at a graphic that shows you kind of all of the teams that we have. So a few things to note. A few of these team names are um, inspired inspired by original team names for these teams so like Brooklyn Robins that was an original name for the Dodgers at one time uh, they went by the Robins I think for a few seasons um, under different leadership uh, in their history I, I don't remember if it was in the 20s or 30s um, I'll probably get lots of angry comments about it um, anyways and then the Spiders Cleveland uh, Indians were originally known as the Spiders I, uh, there were several names that they went by in their early history and Spiders was one of them so I included them. There's also a few in here that are inspired by Negro League teams. So I have the Monarchs and also the Grays. So those are two teams that were uh, some names of original um, Negro League teams. And I'd also like to think that I think the Red Caps are something that would be similar to something that the Negro Leagues would have as well. Also to note that there are, when we go through some of these stadium names, I did name some of the stadiums after some black pioneers as well, or pioneers that helped black baseball, let's put it that way. In 1954, there wasn't a lot of that yet. Um, but uh, there is one park named Branch Rickey Park, um, or Branch, Rick, Branch Rickey Park, uh, for named for Branch Rickey, who is the guy who brought in Jackie Robinson. Uh, and there's a Satchel Page field as well. So, all right. So that said, let's go down and look at these teams in a little bit more detail. Okay. So we're going to go to our video cam here. I got these all set up on my field that I use for my games. Uh, I should note that right now I'm currently in the middle of my, or starting my season. I'm already in the second series of 14. We play 42 total games, so they're starting uh, those games now for um, round two of 14. So we're going to go through these teams a little bit. I'm going to go through uh, some of the cards here, and we'll look at them, and then um, just show off some of the players that are on some of the teams. We're not going to go into a whole lot of detail, but just kind of showing them off a bit. So the first one is... Uh, the Brooklyn Robins, again, and these are, by the way, in order that they drafted, roughly. Um, and they're not exactly in that order, but um, as far as how good these teams are, that's roughly the, the order they're in for each of these. So um, they could finish about in this order, or we could have some surprises. So Brooklyn Robins, we have uh, Clint Courtney leading off in the lineup here. Danny Schell. There's uh, Danny Schell, George Kell. Joe Frazier, okay. uh, Chuck Stobbs, uh, Dick Marlowe, who has no ratings on his card. He's actually pretty good. I mean, you know, you, if you think about it, that does mean that they're average, right? Um, Hoyt Wilhelm, Smokey Burgess, and uh, Harvey Keene. 
and Sid Gordon. And they don't, these players do not seem like they're in order. For some reason, this team's not in order that they should be in. Looks like they got reversed or something, or, yeah, this is weird. Okay, so this team's getting shown in the wrong order. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Willie Mays, uh, Al Rosen. I'm going to just do this. Al Rosen, Gene Baker, Del Enos, Vic Wirtz, and here's the starting pitchers Johnny Antonelli, Russ Meyer. And Bob Rush. Those are their three starters. Okay. Um, so, well, hopefully the the next teams will be a little bit more organized than that. I apologize for that one. It's interesting. No Burgess is actually their uh, catcher and their lead up lead off guy. So when they don't play their catcher, they have an alternate lineup, and I think that pitcher actually or that catcher actually is fairly good too. He's like third in their lineup. So, all right. Next one is the Monarchs, Milwaukee Monarchs. So they're kind of the Milwaukee Braves essentially of this league. Um, and they're pretty good. Uh, so here's their, their logo, and they play at Borchard Field. I believe I spelled Borchard Field wrong. Uh, Borchard Field, by the way, a uh, little reference here for you. That's where the Milwaukee Brewers minor league team played uh, before the Braves came to town in 1953. Okay, um, so here we go. We got uh, Mini Minoso um, leading off for their team, Yogi Berra. Uh, Ray Boone, Ted Kluzewski, it's, this guy is really good, I like him, Frank Thomas, Wally Post, Roy McMillan, Ted Lepico, and then uh, pitchers Mike Garcia, Tom Polsky, and Dwayne Paulette. They've got a really good pitching staff on this team. This is actually a very solid team. Um, they're going to do well. All right, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is the third best team. They're the Yellow Jackets, and this yellow is kind of hard to see, but uh, this is their team. Uh, they play at Honus Wagner Field. Uh, so we have, uh, I'm just going to go through starting lineups here. So uh, Jim Finnegan, Granny Hamner, Jim Pearsall, Mickey Mantle, Walker Cooper, Joe Collins, Billy Hunter, Gene Woodling, another Gene, uh, Gene Conley starts out their pitchers, the great Warren Spahn, one of the best left-handed pitchers ever to play baseball, and Dick Littlefield. Okay. With the Blues, Chicago Blues, they play at Northside Ballpark, real original there, actually, and there's a Chicago counterpart, the Sluggers, uh, for the junior circuit, they play at the Southside Ballpark, makes it simple. Bobby Vila, Joe Adcock, Red Wilson, Sandy Amoros, Jim Busby, Johnny Logan. Some of these cards do have errors on them, by the way, so some of them are going to have to eventually get reprinted. But I, the, some of the Delta Sig, uh, Delta Sigma ratings got set with both Delta and Sigma on the card, um, but it's not something that's major that's going to affect it. Uh, and then lastly, Dave uh, Dave Philly. And then starting pitchers for them is Der, uh, Virgil Trucks. For those of you who uh, know Derek Trucks, who is, he's an uh, uncle of Derek Trucks, who plays for the um, Tedeschi Trucks Band. Uh, Bob Porterfield and Jake Thies. Okay. Next up is the Cincinnati Arrows. They play at Cracker Jack Park. 
which is a small bandbox park, small, small. <laughs> Should be lots of fun. Toby Atwell, starting off for them. Um, Red Shadiums. Uh, the cool thing about these, uh, notice on the bottom here, I, on all these cards I've listed here where they played, where they originally played in 1954. So I always kind of know, you know, like Chico Carascal, he played for the White Sox, obviously. Um, Hank Bauer. With some of these other players, like Kim Bauer, he played for the Yankees. I, the name is not one that's all that familiar for me. I, I, I casually know it, but Cass Michaels, Johnny Gross, Roy Severs, and Whitey Lockman. And then for pitchers, we have Ned Garber, Tom Morgan, and Carl es Erskine. Okay. All right. Next up is St. Louis. So St. Louis, they are the pioneers. They play at Rogers Hornsby's Field, and this is this is the best logo I think I did for the entire set. Um, and it's so simple; it's just a text logo, but the font just happened to work perfectly, and it looks so old timey that it's like really cool. I like it the best. I out of all of these logos, I think it's the best logo. But anyways, we have. Um, Johnny Temple for them. Uh, Joe Garagiola. Gus Bell. Bobby Morgan. Jerry Lynch. Great Al Kaline, who just passed away just recently. Vern Stevens. Earl Torgerson. Pitching, we have Jim Wilson, Joe Coleman, and Willard Nixon. You can see that the pitching quality is starting to go down for some of these lesser teams. But this team's actually still pretty good for pitching. Uh, it's going to get worse. <laughs> some of these um, uh, junior circuit teams on the bottom really did not do well. Um, but anyways, next up is the Royals, the Queens Royals. They play in Queens, New York. Uh, and they play at Christy Mathewson Field. Okay. So we have Richie Ashburn for them. We have Bobby Adams, Joe Cunningham, Hank Sauer, Gus Cerniel, um, Bobby Young, Ray Cat. Joe DeMastri. This is one of the cards I screwed up. You can see here I have Delta Sigma single. It's supposed to be a Sigma single, but yeah, I kind of got screwed up. So, uh, And then pitching, I have Kurt Simmons. And Bob Miller. So yeah, you can see here some of the pitching starting to go down in quality just a bit. And then Max Sircon. And actually, they're, uh, the Queens, Queens Royals are actually are not doing too horribly. Um, they are, I want to say they're 3-2-1 and one or something like that. They're really actually, uh, they're not doing as bad as I thought they would be. Uh, and they're pitching, their workman pitchers for some reason have just been really killing it. Uh, all right, so last one here in the senior circuit, we have the uh, Philadelphia Commodores, and they play at the Navy Yard. Okay. So we have Don Mueller, Al Smith, Ray Jablonski, Bob Skinner, Chuck Deering. And I'm maybe burning, might be murdering some of these teams. I'm not real good with names, but um, if I am, I apologize to the players uh, and their families at this point. Uh, but yeah, if uh, some of these I, I murder somewhat a bit, but I try to get some most of them right. I do know 1950s baseball is like one of my favorite periods of baseball, but um, even I'm not I'm as versed as I should be on some of the player names. Uh, Davy Williams, Gary Lee. And Roy Campanella, who was not good that year, um, but they're going to have him next year as well, and he's going to look a lot better next year. So, uh, Robin Roberts is their first pitcher, awesome pitcher. They this is a, a steal for this team. Uh, they've got some phenomenal pitching on with this guy here, uh, Bob Turley, 
and then um, Fred Bezuski. And the, that was a, a guess on the pronunciation, but I think I'm right on that one just because I know enough Polish people in this area. Polish is a big uh, ethnic group <laughs> in the greater Milwaukee area. So uh, I went to school with a lot of Polish people and learned how to pronounce names uh, for them very quickly. All right, starting with the uh, junior circuit and the Grays. This is basically the New York Yankees of this league. Uh, they play at Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig Legends Park, and they can see that. This is another one of my favorite logo. Uh, sec, well, probably my second favorite logo I did. Um, this is just a, um, you know, the Statue of Liberty in there, which gives it its ties to New York. Uh, Phil Calvaretta is their leadoff guy. Andy Carey, Duke Snyder. And this is uh, Ted Williams. This is a really good team. They're pretty pretty stacked. Uh, Jim Gilliam, it's kind of like an all-star team from the 50s here. Um, Al Dark, Mickey Vernon, and then uh, Johnny Wyrostek. And then pitching for them. Pitching is not as solid as some of these other teams. Bob Lemon, Art Houdeman. And Billy Lowe's. Okay. The Americans. And someone made a comment when I uh, posted these lineups on my Facebook group that uh, they seemed, they thought that this team was overpowered. I can see that, possibly. This, this is also a pretty good team. So this is the Columbia Americans. They play in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. And they play Capitol Field. So we have Stan Musial leading off, Bill Sarney, Rick Popolsky, Eddie Matthews, Ernie Banks, uh, D. Fondy, Gil McDougald, and Bill Wilson. And then pitching. Some pretty good pitchers here. Uh, early win, Bob Grimm, and Howie Paulette. Um, interesting thing to note here, uh, next season, they're looking at, so the players that they have with contracts expiring next year, if I remember right when I was looking at this, was Matthews, uh, Banks, and Musial. So it's like they have they have like their top three players on their team and they gotta like make decisions as who they're gonna really go after and who they may have to let go. So that's kind of a tough decision. Um, so they may not be as good next year uh, for sure. Uh, so as overpowered as they may seem now, eh, they might have some issues. We'll see. Uh, our Boston team, Boston Minutemen. You may recognize this logo because I uh, gave this logo for um, Steve tower to use for his Boston Minutemen that he had. I think the two of us came up with this name kind of independently at the same time. Uh, and then he's like, can you give me a logo? Uh, or I actually offered him the logo and he's like, yeah, this is really cool. So he used it for his. Uh, I'm going to use it again for this one. So um, it's a good logo. I like it. Um, I like the little 19 or 1775 thing in there, which kind of adds a little flavor to it. But anyways, they got Nelly Fox. Oh, by the way, they're playing at Cy Young Field, sorry. Uh, Bill Bruton, Grady Hatton, Gil Hodges, uh, Stan Lapata, Ralph Kiner, Andy Pafko, George Strickland, and then pitching, Lou Burdett. Eddie Lopat and Sal Magri. Okay. It's pretty good pitching on that team. All right, Chicago Sluggers. So going on the other side of Chicago, and as I said before, play at Southside Ballpark. And here we go. Jim Rivera. Jack Shepard. Alex Gramis. 
rookie Hank Aaron. This was his rookie season. Hank Thompson. Gary Aganis, and I just dropped a bunch of cards. Hang on. My apologies while we take a brief second for a timeout here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay. Larry Doby. Danny O'Connell. And Frank Sullivan starting out the pitching. Whitey Ford and Art Fowler. So not too bad on pitching for them either. Like I said, a lot of this pitching is pretty close, I think, as far as starters is concerned. So there's not a lot of difference. And I think that's going to be the one thing here that will, I think, <clears throat> make a difference in keeping the <clears throat> standing somewhat close. At least closer than um, might be thought looking at some of these lineups. Uh, Red Caps, the Detroit Red Caps, they play at Ty Cobb Field. So we have Pee Wee Reese, Jackie Jensen, Monte Urban, um, Carl Ferrillo, Andy Semenik, Eddie Wakis, and Eddie Ost. And Frank Bowling. Interesting thing about the Bowling brothers here. Uh, they both play this year. They do not play next year. One of them went into service next year. Uh, and the other one played like about six games last that season. So didn't make it into the basic active players for that year. Uh, as far as my criteria are concerned. So they won't play next year. But then they come back the year after. And they both have like really solid careers after that. Which is kind of interesting. But anyways. Uh, pitching Steve Gromek, Harvey Haddix, and Bob Keegan. So really some good pitchers for these teams here. Really solid. Uh, the Where this, some of these teams fall apart is when you see um, you know, things like their backup pitchers here. So they have like Tom Brewer and Mike Bliska for one of their relievers. They're basically the same. <laughs> so yeah, it... Some of these teams don't have uh, relieving again wasn't a thing as much then, so they aren't as good. Uh, the good thing about that though is, is that again we're playing in 1954, so the pitchers are going to be fresh for four innings, semi fresh for three, so they can finish a seven inning game. So for the most part, um, I'm having pitchers getting complete games uh, probably about 60 to 65 maybe percent right now. Um, and that's just kind of my over tendency to put in closers uh, if it's a close game, whereas that may not have happened as often, but uh, it's worked out. Uh, brawlers, here we go. They play, uh, this is Baltimore Brawlers. They play at Satchel Page Park. You can see their lineup there. And uh, they took, I mean, Satchel Page never played in Baltimore. He played in Kansas, I think it was, no, St. Louis. Uh, where the team originally came from, and um, so they kind of borrowed the player for that um, honor. All right, so we have uh, Sammy White, uh, Jim, Grim uh, Jim Greengrass, the other bowling, Milt Bowling, uh, Randy Jackson, Lou Limmer, Bill Rana, Kurt Roberts, choo -choo -choo -choo. here we go, Kurt Roberts, Bob Talbot, Johnny Schmitz, uh, George Zuberink, and as you can see here, some of those pitching starting to go up downhill a bit. Don Larson. Okay. So, all right, that's them. We got two more teams left. We got the Spartans out of Philadelphia. Uh, they will be moving to Kansas City next year. Just the fans in Philadelphia don't know yet, but they've got a pretty much a clue that that's going to happen. Wally Moon starting off for them. Ferris Spain. Spook Jacobs. Uh, Don Hoke. Ed Fitzgerald. Pete Reynolds. Pete Reynolds, sorry. Uh, Jim Delsing. And then Tom Umflett. Pitching, 
They have Ruben Gomez, Billy Pierce, and Murray Dixon. And again, like you can kind of see here, uh, this one, yeah, like one of their relievers here is a semi struggler, Vern Law. And he actually will become better. They got him under a long term contract. I think they're going to benefit out of that. So, in the end, interestingly enough, Vern Law, uh, my only perfect game and my only no hitter that I ever had in any baseball game uh, on the tabletop was with Vern Law in an all star set, uh, all time greatest Pirates. They're playing the St. Louis Cardinals and Vern Law through a no hitter perfect game. So, um, crazy things, yeah. All right, last one is the Spiders out of Cleveland playing at Tris Speaker Field. We have uh, Bill Tuttle, Dick Cole, Walt Dropo, Del Crandall. Cal Abrams, Jim Fridley, and Wayne Torlinger, and Phil Rizzuto in a really bad state that year. I don't know what happened to him that year, but it was not good. Um, all right, and then pitching, we have Jack Harshman, Brooks Lawrence, and Alex Kellner, semi-struggler, is one of their three starters. So, yeah, that's going to be a little bit rough for them. So that's it uh, for all the teams. So, a few things here. Um, comment below and tell me which team you're rooting for, uh, which team you think might win it all, and also which logo you like the best out of these. And then also, uh, kind of a programming note here as far as what we're going to do. We're going to start stepping up videos a little bit more often. So my plan for this is I'm now in week two of a 14-week season. Uh, that's basically how I'm going to do this, 42 games for seasons for these, uh, for each team. And I'm playing out all their games. So like I said, I'm in week two right now. I've uh, just got things kicked off. So in the week two, I'm saving one game uh, for the um, senior circuit and one for the junior circuit for each week. Uh, it'll be kind of a game of the week. I'm going to try to spread it out a bit so all of the teams do get some exposure. But I'm also going to pick some games that are a little bit more exciting. Also some rivalry games, uh, things like the Grays and the Minutemen playing each other. Uh, which will be kind of exciting, um, or the um, Blues and the um, Pioneers playing, uh, Chicago and St. Louis. Uh, so some rivalries, uh, you know, trying to get some rivalries on the tabletop, as well as some games uh, of relevance uh, where there might be some positioning in play as well. Uh, so I'll probably be doing two, like I said, two games a week uh, until the end of the season um, and then try to broadcast those. And I'm going to try to make them as short as possible. Uh, this is a 40-minute video. I want to try to get those down to about 20 minutes total uh, with player introductions and things like that and kind of um, everything else that goes into it in the actual game time, hopefully like about the 10 to 15-minute period, depending on if there's uh, extra innings or not or anything like that. Um, and hopefully we don't get any games where the Mercy Roll gets kicked in. We do have a six-run Mercy Roll at the end of each inning. Uh, if the game, if anybody leads by six uh, runs or more at the end of any full inning, then the game is over. Um, that's kicked in uh, a few times this season already. Um, so, and uh, it could happen. And hopefully we don't get any ties. We had one tie so far this season. It just happened on my tabletop the last game I played before recording this. Um, but I don't uh, the way that the nine inning game works, I we're I think we're not gonna see um, or the nine inning maximum on the seven inning baseball. Uh, I don't think we're gonna see it all as often as we as I did when I did the six inning version uh, for my um, my October classics league that I played. So that is all I have for all of you. Uh, again, comment below which team you're rooting for, and then also maybe which team you think might win it all, even if it's not the same team that you're rooting for. Like you might be rooting for 
uh, the Cleveland Spiders because you just really like Cleveland, and but you know that you know maybe somebody like the Robins might win it all or something like that. So, um, you know, see, uh, we'll see what pe who people are rooting for. Maybe uh, highlight those uh, people when we do further videos. So, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching this, and I hope to see you in some of the game videos that we do in the future.